I'm too tired to come up with a pun about wires being hot and electricity. So here's the kiln, much the way we left it. Got the two elements poking out here, and they aren't connected to anything. This, however, is the thing that it's going to be connected to. Uh, this, this here is a thermocouple, you know, I'll poke this into the thing, mount it on, and uh, these are, I think these are two dissimilar metals, and when you apply heat, the, that generates a very small current, I think, and then that sends that signal to the witchcraft box, and that tells the uh, elements, uh, or sends power to the elements to heat them up, or no power to let them cool off. This is some various lengths of extremely thick wire. Phillips screwdriver, duct tape's not supposed to be here. Should have cleaned that up. Here we have a cord that uh, you plug in. This is uh, for 220. I think it's a 220, 20 amp cord, 240 volt, I mean. Uh, yeah, it says here 240 volt, 20 amp, 60 hertz. Standard whatever, and into this hole, you don't plug this because that does nothing. Uh, that's where you plug in the elements. So basically, Elements need to connect to this, to, to one of these. This needs to go into a power outlet. Slight problem, I don't have a power outlet with this. I have a power outlet with that plug on it. This cord is attached to my garage heater, which is sitting on the floor. This needs to be where this is, and it would sure be nice if this was actually plugging in here and attached, instead of here, but to the elements. See where I'm going with this? What will follow is sure to void my warranty. So I break out my trusty, yet terrible screwdriver, good old Harbor Freight, and we're going to crack open this box of magic and see uh, how it ticks. Are there angry pixies living inside? Are they in condos? Or, or what, what's going on? Why are they so angry? Do they want better living conditions? And if you're watching Orton, I know you don't sponsor me or know anything about me, but at the very least, please don't void my warranty for doing this and sticking it on YouTube before I even plug the machine in. In my defense, you really shouldn't have put screws on it like this, because obviously I'm going to open it up. Let's see what we got. Huh. All right. So this is a control board. I see a transformer. See this looks like power block. And these are some nice, easy to remove plugs. So I'm just going to remove that. That one's a thermocouple. Okay, that's not really easy to remove, but at least, you know, not, not having the other things plugged in will be nice. Okay, so this goes into the strain relief. This goes into uh, this, this big old power block. Looks like it's got uh, quarter inch connectors there. You got the, the black, the white. The ground is actually like stuck on there with a, a nut. Okay, that's, uh, that, that shouldn't be too difficult to remove. And Orton, if you're watching, please don't void my warranty. Please, pretty please, I'm putting in bigger wires. Like this, I think the wiring on this, well this whole thing is only rated for 20 amp total. And I'm probably going to be using like 15, 12-ish. Uh, and the wiring I'm going to be using is all for 30 amp. And then the plug is for 50 amp. So basically, all the stuff that I'm putting on is overkill. Which is, you know, about the right amount of kill. You don't want under kill. You need at least the right amount of kill. And thank you, Orton, for using standard fasteners. Quarter inch, five sixteenth. And there's the power cord off. Now the end of this cord, the one I want to use, has quarter inch, which is correct. Focus. Quarter inch, which is correct for one. This round dealy, which is correct for the ground, and a round dealy, which is wrong. Fortunately, I grabbed out of my work truck this giant box full of electrical connectors. And that makes it, you know, nice and easy when you got all the parts. Of course, I don't have a, a wire stripper good enough for, like, this giant honking wire. Like, see, this is a standard, like, smaller wire stripper. I'll just show you what I mean here. It's hard to, like, line her up and... Oh, actually, actually no. I guess that works That works halfway decent. I got these. These aren't ultra high-end wire connectors. They're just from Ace, but they are gigantic. You see this giant wire? Oh, I got to strip a little more than that, don't I? Yeah. But this giant wire fits right in, this big strand of wire. Now, this is, this is a cord originally off a 
off a dryer or an oven. Either way, the original, the original uh, rating for this was like 30 or 40 amps. Again, way above what I'm going to be asking of it. Fun fact, this wire cutter has a little crimper thing. Usually the wire crimpers and the cutters, pretty much all of them suck. I hate all of them I've ever tried except for these ones. These ones are made by Klein. Not only as uh, not only is the crimper like it works. It's not as great as like a fancy pants crimping tool, but it works. Uh, it also cuts wire. Like so many of these wire cutters don't cut wire. Like that. That's the name. That's the one thing you're supposed to do. But Klein, Klein Tools, seems to be nice. Just double check. These are holding pretty good. Kind of nervous with the exposed wire. I'm going to grab me some electrical tape. Also, electrical tape. 3M electrical tape is what I like. I've tried the Duck brand electrical tape, and I do not like it one bit. Especially... Here in Wisconsin, when it gets cold, the Duck brand stuff turns rock hard. It's not stretchy, it doesn't break easy, it doesn't adhere when it's cold. Probably should have, like, at the very least done this when I used this cord on the, uh, on the heater. Especially because all those wires were exposed. Like, if you just walked next to it, it would, it would hit you. You'd, you'd get a nice zap. Better than, a, better than an espresso to wake you up. So the next part that I'm kind of afraid of, will it fit through that hole? Hmm, maybe I'll just feed a couple couple bits through. Ground, ground is in. L1 is in. Oh, it's going. But the electrical tape's bunching up. You've betrayed me, electrical tape. All right, well, I don't know why Orton didn't think to accommodate people like me trying to jam the wrong cord into this thing. It seems like a design oversight, in my opinion. The nut on the ground. There we go. And look at that, even the strain relief fits. Well, I must say, using this, like, extra thick, high power rated uh, overkill cord really is not fun. It's stranded copper, but still, like, these these sharp bends, that, that really is not fun to do. And I'm always afraid that, like, oh, it's going to snap, but, like, stranded copper is not real brittle, and this plastic, like, insulation is not real brittle. But let's just say eventually it's going to get really cold in here and I'm going to need to take this power cord back off. And I'll probably have to like go buy another one of these and stick that on there. Gently plug these back in to their respective spots. Being careful not to bonk these capacitors. And don't foul up any of the wiring. There, that's that. Now, the next question is... How do I wire this up to my elements? So the thing is, I got three here and four here. So this, obviously, this one's ground, ground of the case. But I got two things and two elements, each with two things. So there are two ways to do this, because everything's a two apparently today. Uh, I can wire each individual element up. Uh, you can wire them up in parallel, which means like this. And this, so these these two and these two would come together and touch this, or you can wire them up in series. So this would go into here, then this into here, then this into here. So it's like it can send power through both at the same time s separately or one into the other. And this, this matters. It's very important, and I'll show you why. So this is Ohm's Law, I equals V over R. Basically, voltage over the resistance equals I, the current, the amperage. We know the voltage. Voltage is 250 or 240. We can know the resistance in a minute, and that will tell us what the amperage, the amp draw will be. If we check an element with the multimeter stuck on ohms, we get 8.5 ohms, 8.6. Was there this much glare the last time I pointed the camera here? I don't think there was. 8.6. So 240 divided by 8.6 is... I can do this in my head. I'm not using my phone or anything. 27 amps. Now that's pretty high, especially given that there are two of these. So you'd be running 27 amps through one element and 27 through the other element. And you'd end up with way too many amps and probably a fire, right? It, it, would, be, it would be chaos. So that's bad. That's if you run them in parallel, right? So it's, you got power going in, power going in. 
and that's running it one element and another element like that. So it kind of looks like a mushroom cloud, which you can barely see now, I realize. Which is fitting because, uh, you know, 54 amps would just blow this thing right up. However, if you run them in series, so got power, power, you know, the two, the two sides of the power. If you run one element into the other element, you actually double this number. So you get 8.6 times 2, which is math, math. 17.2, so 240 divided by 17.2 equals 14, round about a little under, almost 14 amps. You might notice 14 is less than 20. 20 is the maximum this, uh, this controller is rated for, so I'm well under that. Uh, it's also less than, significantly less than the 30 amp service that I have going to this 240 outlet. If that number were bigger, like if I wired them up in parallel, we get mushroom cloud and explosion and uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth. So to wire these up in parallel, I have some various lengths of ultra thick stranded copper wire and my uh, stripper and cutter crimper thing. This is also very, very thick wire. It's, uh, it's, it's basically the thick stuff that they run to the heating element in a dryer. It's a little bit thicker than that, actually. You know, I see dryer heating elements all the time and the wiring is never as thick as this. And this wiring is supposed to be rated for 30 amps and a, and a dryer heating element takes like more than 20 amps. So I don't know, like, are they like cutting the safety margin way too thin or something? Uh, I don't know, except for Speed Queen, their wiring seems to be about that thick. It's a bit big, I'm gonna shrink that a little. Slide that in. Again, crimping tools would be nice. But these are half decent. If you have to buy a cutter crimper and you don't want a crimping tool, buy a Klein cutter crimper. Not a sponsor, but I will take some free wire cutters. Just saying. Oh dear. Yes. Yes, there we go. Now to connect these to that, ideally I would have, have more of this thick wire coming out of there going to male disconnects to go into these female disconnects. Thing is, these male disconnects are too small. They're just not big enough. They're not they're not for beefy wire. I need the they're like twenty two to eighteen. I need I need the ones that say like ten to twelve gauge, not twenty two to eighteen. These are pathetic. But I do have these which are big honking butt connectors. Unfortunately that means potentially more warranty voiding action going on right now on camera. Please don't void my warranty. I only ripped apart your equipment before even trying it. And uh, now I'm chopping up the bits. See, the real benefit of an actual crimping tool is leverage. You know, these these don't have the, the leverage. Not a big deal for, for small connectors, but with these, these are really substantial. And it just is no bueno. Maybe if you had, like, Hulk hands, it would be fine. But I do not. There, and I'll probably ground this to, like, there. You know, later on when I when I do the thing. I should really make, like... When I make the actual shell over this, I'm going to make a panel that like goes from here, sticks out, and goes over. That way it protects these, but also leaves like space. And I'll probably have the top open so air can like get through so it won't overheat all this. That's, that's not a bad idea, right? I wonder, can you Clico through a ground? It does fit. It's not very tight, and that's probably not advisable. But Clicos are temporary anyway. Should really be using shrink wrap for this, shouldn't I? If anyone has a suggestion on decent shrink wrap, let me know. Okay, you know what time it is now? Okay, now it's time to plug it in and see if it lets the smoke out. There, element connected. All right, and the moment we've been waiting for. You know, I should probably connect this, put it through here, connect it to that bracket thing I talked about, right? I mean, that would be cool. That, yeah, that would work. For right now, I'm just going to set it right in yeah. Alright, moment. Three, two, one. Don't let the smoke out. Hit. <laughs> Yay? What is that? Lines? Idle? Lines. O okay. User. Sturt? Idle? Delay? TC? Is that... Okay, that's the thermocouple. 
off. Okay, delay off. Idle 47. What is is it 47 in here? Is that what that's saying? What if I what if I hold on to this? 49. 50. Okay, so that's telling me the thermocouple. Okay. Okay, 60. I should probably read this book. Okay, I think I got an idea. Beep. P R O 1 R A 1 full. What is R A 1? Fahrenheit 2400, that's pretty hot. HRA2, Sturt, on? Oh, oh, it just, it turned on. It's on, it's on run. It's on. I think that means it's on. I heard a click and I hear humming. I, I hear, I hear humming. Oh, it's getting toasty. My hand is getting toasty. Okay, let's see, let's see, for reference, that wall. 10 Celsius, who likes 50 degrees? Okay, that wall is 50 degrees. And in here, that is that is at 260. Okay, so that's that's pretty clearly getting hotter now. So uh wow. This this thing might actually work. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to read this book and figure out how to actually program this thing. Because it does a lot of stuff. Okay, so there we go. Magic mystery box hooked up and machine is heating up. So now it's, uh, you know, finish it off, make it look a little better, actually put that insulation in the walls, uh, cover up these death wires with something, and read that manual so I actually know how to use this thing. Because so far I've just managed to accidentally turn it on, and that's all I can do. It's not particularly useful at the moment.